Hey Leo, how are you? It's me, Lauren B. Welcome to the Untitled Tarot. As always, Leo, these readings are timeless. So when you get here is when you get here. Um, feel free to bop around all the signs. They're all part of the collective story, so don't feel like you just have to watch yours. But if this reading is a blessing to you, I do ask that you like, share, and subscribe. And there will be an extended to this reading. The link for that is in the description box. So... Leo, I was not anticipating doing your sign. I'm in the middle of doing the monthly readings for February on the Patreon. And the song came up on the Shuffle Mancy by Nick Park. And it's called Drunkards and Me. And then all of a sudden, it was like, you have to do the Leo Weekly reading right now. And I was like, okay. Like, okay. Like, that's fine. Like, okay. I didn't know. And so there might be something in your energy, Leo, that, like, you don't think it's, like, your time. You don't think it's, like, your time. But turns out it is your time like surprisingly unbeknownst to you like your your number's up like it's time for your blessings and there's this there's this funny line in this song he goes I may have lost my soul but I still have my belief that the good Lord will have some mercy on the drunkards and me so uh, there might be something Leo for you that you feel as though like your walk hasn't been perfect or like you're not perfect. And you're like, I like to get down. Like, I like to have fun. Like, I'm not a perfect person. Like, I am a sinner. I know. But can you please have some mercy on me? And and God's kind of saying like, I know Leo. Like, shorties get down. Like, I know. It's okay. Like, I still love you. Like, and I always like to say that. Jesus always ran with like the freaks and the geeks, right? That you maybe you haven't had a, a, a perfect walk or you're not this like super high vibe, like spiritual namaste, kumbaya kind of person. But it doesn't mean that like, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean you can't get blessed. blessed. It doesn't mean you can't have abundance. It doesn't mean any of that. Like you have to be yourself. You're a Leo. That's what you do. You have to be, be yourself. So I'm going to use it right away. There's two cards that just flipped out for you. I'm not even going to look at them until we pray because, you know, we all need... <laughs> We all need a little Jesus in our lives. So, Father God, thank you for bringing me and Leo in today. I ask that you give me wisdom, clarity, and discernment to deliver these messages accurately in Leo's highest of love, light, alignment, and assignment. We praise you. We love you. We thank and honor you always to the utmost high. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, my little drunkards. So, let's see what these two cards are. Oh, interesting. Okay. Okay. So you have the six of pentacles first out, Leo. So I'm going to take it as like your first house sort of card. So again, you're you're not perfect, but it's like you're doing your best, Leo. It's like you're given. You're you're trying to be charitable. You're trying to be generous. You're trying to like live your life in with like a good heart, like the best possible way you can, right? But there's also this idea of like a beggar, a beggar. Like one, you're you're way too proud to beg. Like you're way too proud to ask for help or support if you need it, right? It's the idea of like I'm just trying to have faith. If I just like do the right thing, like God will just give me whatever it is that I need. So that way I don't have to ask any of these people. It feels a little bit like that, honestly. But there is this idea of like breadcrumbing, like feeling like you've been breadcrumbed. Like you haven't really gotten like the, the, the equal energy exchange that like you've been putting out a little bit of like running on E. Like you've been putting out into the world more than you've been getting. There is that energy, but because it's upright, it's just that you are really doing it like from a good heart. This idea of like covering, like you like to cover people. There's, I, I keep hearing you say like, I got it covered. Like I got it covered. Don't worry. Like I'll cover it. I'll cover it. I, I, I worry if you're overextending yourself though, because if you're feeling a little like you might, you might just be overextending yourself a little bit, but death is here right so death is a really nice card because it denotes transformation and kind of being in more of that second house placement of value it's that you are really putting a lot of value on transformation right like you're really putting a lot of faith out there like i'm not a perfect person but i'm doing my best and i'm just would really love to see like a change in my situation i would really love to see a change in my circumstances and my relationships in me can i see a change in me Even this guy, see, he's like at prayer. He's like praying. He's like, oh, please. And almost hearing like no more destruction, right? Because this is a card of transformation, but it's like the idea of like, do, how much more do I have to sacrifice? Like how much more do I have to sacrifice to like get like a win here? Wow, that's awesome. That's awesome, Leo. The sun, third house of communication. Look at this. This is the happiest card in the deck, y'all. 
It's the happiest card in the deck. This is love. This is healing. This is restoration. This is moving into a new season. This is peace, joy. This is like all the good stuff. And I, I love it because it's the sense that you're looking towards like death. Like, please don't take any more of my shit. I don't have much more to give you, Lord, please. Like, please just let me have some transformation. But meanwhile, unbeknownst to you, and look, I didn't even notice that. Look, the sun is like right behind you. The sun is rising right behind you. I didn't even, I've never noticed that in this card. And I've had this deck forever, for years. Wow. I should wear my glasses more. Um, that's amazing that the sun is really rising like right behind you. But it's the idea that it hasn't like, it's still making its way up. It's still making its way up. It hasn't like gotten like right before you yet in like your, in your natural eyesight. So it's also the idea of like shadows. That as the sun kind of comes up, it casts a shadow outward. I don't know if that makes sense to you. But that's also in terms of like, the coldness right because you see these beggars and their breadcrumb and they have like these these coats and stuff on too like it's cold it's always like it's always darkest right before the dawn it's that sort of energy but that being said it's also important to note that that's how miracles happen like if everything's going super great for you right like there's an idea of like being blessed and then being able to maintain that kind of flow of favor and blessings but when you need like a miracle or some kind of big transformation which i'm assuming that that's what you're aiming for because you have two major arcana back to back that um you don't need a miracle when everything's like going super great for you when it's like you're super financially stable and your love life some point and you're just like super spiritually in tune you can be blessed hell yeah you could be blessed you can maintain those blessings you can ride it to the wheels fall off but a miracle you don't need a miracle when like everything like the whole of your life your existence is just like at a 10 that's not when you need a miracle you need a miracle when you're like down and out right so again it's the darkest before the dawn as the sun's rising behind you and you're not really seeing it it's casting a shadow making things look even darker than they actually are when they're actually getting better boom fourth house house of home tower moment shock and surprise people um oftentimes get really freaked out when they see the tower card but i find that one most towers are internal and not external but they're they're it's divine it's a major arcana card so this is divine intervention it's a divine detour it's it's a shake-up it's a surprise it's something that you weren't expecting coming out underneath the six of pentacles there might have been the sense that at some point you kind of gave up on expecting to see kind of a return on your investment even if it's the investment in your future and in yourself because it feels like it's just taken so long right and there could have been a point where you were kind of beating yourself up like maybe i'm just not like good enough like maybe i just don't deserve it maybe it's because i'm just like a drunkard and like i just like i'm just like not pure enough i'm not spiritual enough i'm not uh, enough right and and i think that Sometimes when we get in those mindsets, we really kind of put God, God in a box and we forget how gracious and how good and how kind and merciful he is to us that, you know, he's perfect, right? We're not angels. We don't have wings. We're just people. To err is human, right? But that doesn't prevent us from, from seeing God, from finding him in our lives, to having him shine favor and blessings on us. Another, what? What? I can see, uh, what? <laughs> I can't, I can't with this reading so far. You got five cards. Four of them are major arcana. So your fifth house of pleasure, your house, Leo, you have temperance. This is patience. This is balance. This is moderation. So again, this is like, for some of you, you might've been like trying to deal with like moderation in your habits right and and you know leo's you're you're very prideful my first house is in leo so no shade right um leo's hair you know you know i got leo placements um but it's the idea that maybe you've been trying to with these little shakers maybe you've been trying to balance out some of your drinking or maybe some of your smoking or your partying or your this or or your pride trying to balance out like your pride too like not you know how other people see you having people see you not as successful or as abundant or anything else as like you'd like to be and also trying to transform that not not feeling as though how other people assess you or value you affects you so much in terms of your own personal self-esteem and there's an element that there is a sense of pride coming from the fact that you have been able to temper out to balance some of your habits even mindsets anything like that but there are some things that like are just, and I was, I was talking to my angels and guides about it. 
some of this stuff last night that I was like, you know, there are these certain things and I'm like, I can balance them and I can temper them. But some of these things I just like, like, I just like them and they're just like part of, and they're like, that's fine. You just keep it, keep it balanced. Right. Um, anything in excess, you could drown yourself with a bottle of water. So it's like anything in excess isn't good for you. So it's also the idea that you are kind of proud of yourself that you've been able to maintain more balance in your life. Maybe next to the tower, that's been surprising to you that you've been able to do that. Um, but to also not like, completely starve yourself of things that do bring you happiness or joy or, or help you relax or, or any of that as well. And you have the hangman in reverse. This is wild. You have five out of six cards that are major arcana. And I shuffled this deck. I shuffled this deck. But it's in reverse, which is nice. So this is your sixth house of health. Um, physical health, mental health, emotional health, spiritual health. It's also Virgo energy. So it's detailed. It's like very day to day. This is you kind of coming off the fence the clarity i mean universe really denotes clarity that one with this foot like this i always like to say it's like flamingo spirit it kind of talks about being in a transition that you know like day to day you've been transitioning your schedule you've been transitioning your attitude trying to be more positive faithful optimistic right um and that it was also clear to you that maybe you needed more balance in your everyday life maybe it doesn't just have to do with drugs, health, sex, and alcohol. Maybe it has to do with workaholism as well because Leo's, your very, your your pride is everything. Uh, a lot like a Capricorn, you take a lot of pride in the work that you do. So it's the idea of like, I have to hustle, I have to hustle, I have to hustle, I have to hustle. So then finally I can flow and not being able to kind of ebb and flow, wane and wax, like the sea, like the moon, right? So this is also you realizing that there's more of a work life, personal, public, pleasure, discipline, balance that you really kind of needed as well. But it seems like you've really done that while trying to maintain a good spirit, even if it's been a little hard for you sometimes, and still be giving and generous to others from like the most authentic place that you can be. And, and what's surprising is that it, it seems like it, it is all really coming together for you. It is the payoff. I just did your monthly reading too, uh, like a few hours ago. Um, I've done quite a few signs since I did yours. And uh, I think it was called Date with Destiny. A Date with Destiny, which was the title of your, your February monthly, Leo. Ooh, ooh. So, okay, your seventh house of relationships. You have the Knight of Wands. So someone's coming in, Leo. <clears throat> This could be you flip it and reverse it, but it feels like an external energy that is underneath this tower. So what may be surprising to you for my unencumbered Leos is that someone might be coming in like pretty quickly and, and seeming real, real excited about getting to know you, spending some time with you. And underneath the six of pentacles as well, it also tells me that this person's coming in very quickly, but they also like are into an equal energy exchange. They're not just like, a fly by night it's not just like a fly by night kind of energy because depending on the surrounding cards the knight of wands can be a little bit of that like player player sort of energy a little bit like the knight of cups but because it's underneath the tower and the six of pentacles what might be surprising to you is that this person you might assume is a fly by night in and out kind of person but and they're bringing me back up to temperance but turns out they actually are a lot more moderate than you're giving them credit for. They're a lot more balanced than you're giving them credit for. And they actually are coming in to balance the scales for you in your personal life. Because again, it's they're bringing me back to that energy of, no, I got it. I got it covered. I'll do it. No, no problem. I'll help you out. I got, you know what I mean? But it's like, who's, who's doing that for you? I just heard playing for keeps. Wow. Page of cups. Page of cups. Um interesting 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 so this is your eighth house so this is your scorpio house it's your house of death and rebirth and you're having the page of cups so underneath temperance and death that's so beautiful is that what is happening for you it seems like leo is that there's a transformation right to balance out temperance a rebirth in you being able to like love and like express yourself and be vulnerable and be open and also take on a new perspective in love because you know you, you go through it and then you know you feel a little you feel a little rough around the edges when it comes to love and romance right but this is you kind of being excited that there's something also about this the excitement and the energy that this person whoever it represents for you is bringing in it's the idea that almost makes you feel like a kid again because pages are 
their youthful energies their student energies but they often represent like children or it's like your inner child like getting to play again there is that kind of energy as well and there's a little fish in this cup too which one talks about flow abundance all that kind of stuff which comes in a lot easier when our heart chakra is open but also fish represent pisces pisces in the tarot represents the high priestess which means intuitively you kind of picked up that this was going to happen but again it was like this waiting this waiting game this waiting game now what's interesting is in your ninth house of spirituality also your house of higher learning you have the lovers in reverse so this is really it's gemini and so this is being like a little bit double-minded it's that I don't want to get hurt again. I don't, maybe I shouldn't choose love. Like maybe this is just like a fly by night. Maybe this is just temporary. Like I don't want to invest in anything that's temporary. I don't want to get hurt when I'm already like trying so hard to maintain my balance and maintain my focus. This is underneath the hangman and the sun as well. Like if, if, you know, if I get burned again, it's going to, it's going to throw me back down into that energy into the pit. And then I'm going to have to climb myself back up and try and balance my energy again. And I don't want to have to go through all that. Right. So there is that energy of almost wanting like to know it's like a short thing or it's like a safe bet or or something like that um which can come out of, out of an energy of control and it can come out of your ego and your pride but it, it almost be, i'm hearing the word safety net for you it, it's wanting to just make sure that you have like a little bit of a safety net because again it, they're bringing me back to the sun behind you that sometimes we move into like a promised land but because we've been in like dry places for so long we don't realize it so even though like your angels your guides gods the readers right are telling you like no you're in your promised land right now you're like i don't know about that it's like almost too good to be true don't want to believe it interesting 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 so don't want to believe it the devil card comes out this is in your 10th house of ambition now the 10th house is ruled by capricorn this is the card of capricorn Capricorn is also Saturnian energy, which is discipline, discipline. So there's this sense that there is, you know, before every breakthrough, there's, there's a breakdown, right? There's always some kind of weird energy, even if it's coming from your own ego or self-sabotage, wanting to st steal, kill, and destroy your promises, right? So that's so interesting that Capricorn, the devil came out in the Capricorn house that there's this energy that, that wants to come in and tell you like, no, Leo, you have to stay focused on work. Like, keep you chained to it. No, Leo, you have to stay focused on yourself. No, Leo, don't even think about it. No, Leo, it's just going to blow up in your face. Like, no, Leo, like, it is too good to be true. It's a, like, just go back to work. Just go back to work and don't worry about it. It's like a little bit like that, but it's coming from devilish energy, whether it's an external energy um, or spirit or whatever, or if it's just coming from your own shadow that maybe still needs um, a level of integration that is... Um, causing you to want to self-sabotage or run away or anything like that again and it's because it, a lot of it's because of the the swiftness and like the passion and excitement that this person is like coming in with that makes you feel a little like i don't know like they're coming in like pretty hot like they're coming in hot right and you know there could yeah thank you there could be times in the past where people came in like really excited like let's do this Leo. let's do this and you're like okay i'm excited let's do this and then it's like wait where'd they go wait where where hello where'd they go right so the fact that this person is coming in like so quickly and like so excited and like so on board you're like i don't know about this i don't know and so that could be triggering up those feelings of doubt Which is why the Queen of Swords is out. You're trying to use your discernment about underneath the Page of Cups, whether or not to exchange these messages. Take on this new perspective in love. Is it balanced temperance? Is it going to actually be a transformation? Is this going to be different this time underneath the death? But it's also in your house of friendships, Aquarian energy, it's your Cos Amigos. We're in Aquarius season right now. Which is also interesting, thank you for pointing that out to me, is that Saturn is in Aquarius right now. I know that because I'm having my Saturn return. Um, and Aquarius is a really like humanitarian energy. So it's actually funny that instead of giving into this like negative energy, self-sabotaging kind of thing, that instead to actually turn that on its head, turn the devil on its head and be disciplined enough to believe in people again, to believe you will see the good of the Lord in the land of the living. That not everyone's going to do you like people did in the past. That sooner or later, the pendulum does swing to the other side and the scales balance out for you. Confirmation.
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh! <laughs> okay. Wow. Okay, okay. Okay, I'm getting too ahead of myself. I get excited. I get excited. So, in your 12th house, this is your Piscean house, so it's your house of secrets. You have the Knight of Swords. So, what might not be readily apparent to you right now is that you're actually going to be getting confirmation about what to do. This is you trying to be discerning and feeling a little bit like, I'm going to turn that, hang, that hangman card, like, upright. I'm going to wait a second. Like, I'm going to take, take a holy pause before I do this. Is this really a blessing or is this, like, a trick? Is it, is it a trick? I don't, I don't know. Is it something? Is it a trick or is it a, a treat, Jesus? Like, I really want to know. Um, what's hidden from you is that there is going to be communication coming into you to help clear this up because the Knight of Swords brings in clear and honest communication. And underneath the House of Spirituality, it tells me that it will probably come in the form of your intuition. It will probably come in the form of an angel or a spirit guide or a sign or a synchronicity or something like that. And you have the Three of Cups at the bottom of the deck, which is community and it's collaboration and it's celebration and it's joy and it's everybody being happy like a bunch of drunkards all together with the Five of Wands in reverse, which is not having to compete with other people for something because what's yours will always be yours and they never have to compete for it with the three of wands underneath that, which is moving forward onto like a new path, onto a new mission. So part of this confirmation that you might be getting through your intuition, signs, synchronicities from your guides is, no, no, Leo, don't let the devil play you out like this. Instead, turn the devil on its head. Decide to be disciplined enough to believe in people, to believe in people again. And believe that this could actually be celebration for you. That it's not something you're going to have to compete over. And it actually is a part of your blueprint. It is a part of your plan. So, yeah. I hope that you enjoyed this. I really hope that this was helpful for you. I really do. Um, February, like I said, your your February monthly was called uh, Date with Destiny. So it seems like you really are fixing to have like a really beautiful month. I'm going to take this over on the Patreon. And I'm going to do an extended reading for you. The link for that will be in the description box. Um, with all of the decks that I use, uh, my social media links, and my emails if you're interested in a personal reading. And until I see you next time, Leo, I love you. As always, stay prayed up, stay blessed, stay sweet, stay encouraged, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.